I'm Jeff Cornwall, and this is The Entrepreneurial Mind. We're here today with John Bransford, the founder of Talkopolis, which is a wonderful host for this show. And we're going to be here to talk with him today about his newest project called The Collective Artists. We'll be back after a word from our sponsor. Bandwidth for today's show is brought to you by SoftLayer.com. We love SoftLayer here at Talkopolis. They are the greatest hosting company ever. They make everything easy. Check out their website at SoftLayer.com. Thanks again for sponsoring the show. Talkopolis, the social media TV network for your city. Welcome back. Uh, we're going to be talking today about um, a, a part of this, this model of Talkopolis that's really uh, taken off in terms of volume, mm -hmm. and that's the music aspect of what's going on here. Right. Talk a little bit about sort of what you have going on and then how this led to this whole new concept of the collective artists that you guys are, are spawning here. Well, when we started programming back in uh, September, September, October, we started off with a number of different angles, music business and uh, emerging artists. And I noticed, looking at the, the numbers, that when the artists would come on, the emerging artists, quote unquote, would come on, our numbers would just, as soon as we uploaded it, on, would just skyrocket. And this was all due to their social media following. They have been working it and they, you know, done a great job in many cases. The ones who've worked their, the social media, Facebook and Twitter, really can drive views to the videos. Now, now these artists have had to do that. I mean, this yeah. is, uh, we've, we've had, uh, and we're in the middle of a, uh, a really serious kind of created destruction and rebirth of this industry. Yeah. And, and while the independent artists have, have uh, it's created opportunity for them, they've had to learn how to work that. And, and they've, the ones who figured it out have done a masterful job. Yeah, uh, yeah. What have they done to get this kind of traffic? How are they driving uh, that kind of volume in through their, their, their social media contacts? Well, well, you have to look at the artists. I mean, the, uh, many of them, it's, through, they're, it's actually a hard way to go. I mean, to get that kind of following. And we have to sort of divide it in YouTube is really not what I'm talking about. Right. YouTube is more of a discover through various viral mechanisms and Google searches and things like that and covering. We're talking about getting a real a following in Facebook and Twitter where you appear, whatever they post appears in the people's news stream, which is where people are focused. And you know, going forward a little bit, as we know Twitter came out with Twitter music based on the concept that musicians have a very high influence among uh, on, in social media. But it's not just the big musicians. Right, right. Uh, and that's really what you're playing off of is sort of, yeah. we've got the long tail of marketing going on today where it's not just the mass yeah. promoted artists that right. have a possibility of, of having success. We, it's, it, it's the independent artists as well. And that's key. I mean, the mass, the big artists, for instance, the top 74 or 5 in Nashville get, have a social media following of about 225 million. But if you look at the next hundred, the next hundred under there, it's not that big, but it's large. And uh, the key, the key is, I mean, I guess we'll get right to it, is that the record labels as they're configured uh, do one thing well, as we talked before we started here, which is to get, and the one real purpose they serve is to get artists airplay on the radio. Visibility. Yeah. Yep. I mean, just music discoveries on the radio. Yep. And what well, has been. It has been, and it's going, but what's going to be next? Right. And, you know, we contend that social media is part of it. Obviously, you know, Pandora is all about music discovery based on your, but social media, just Facebook, Twitter, is going to be part of the equation going forward. And what's missing, where these artists, the, the radio part of it has been you, People tune in because they want to hear a range of different things, or they're forced to hear a range of different things. Right. And it's just not to go to one artist and not tuning in to let, listen to Led Zeppelin. Right. Some radio station tried that, went right. out of business in a month. But um, they know they're going to hear a bunch of things. So by collectively bringing the artists' social media together to cross-promote each other in a way that's in a collective form, they can go from, for instance, 30,000 followers 
to 300,000 followers, just 10 of them, that are high quality, well respected, everybody is in it because they can promote something that may not be their exact form of music, but at least you can respect the level of, of craftsmanship. In so it. they already have an intense interest and in, in, in like of this one artist. Right. And the fact that this, art, this other artist is connected with them, exactly. uh, they're more likely to listen and, and, and connect. And they will at least respect it enough to give it a try. Yeah. They may not agree with it, but it's worth a try. That's the big problem. How do you get more people to sample your music? Right. I mean, that's what radio solves. And as it goes away, we believe that this is a way for artists to help each other and uh, it makes logical mathematical sense. In a lot of ways what you're doing here with this model is you're an aggregator of social media mm -hmm. and, and, and trying to kind of pull some critical mass together in terms of, of, of leveraging what people already have with what you're able to build on. Exactly, of. exactly. I mean we in November last year, we had 400, this is like two or three months, depending on your definition, of, from when we started programming at all. We had 450,000 video views, and all of it, just about all of it, was driven by these musicians cross-promoting other shows. And because we would ask them to do this and ask them to do that, and they, they did, you know. And there was no real system in place, at, which is what we're proposing here but it works. So that was kind of an aha moment for you when you saw that happen. It was the aha moment. Is, yeah. So how has that pivoted your business model, do you think? What, what's going to be different about Talkopolis than you maybe envisioned even just a month or two ago? Well, exactly what we're talking about. We've been working on this a while. I mean, I've seen this now. It's taken a while to sort of work out systems and think it through. Uh, and, and it isn't all just musicians, for instance. The fantasy football show we had on with a local celebrity, Nancy Filippelli, right. she has a huge following on social media, and she really drove a lot of views, but it's still the same theory. Right. She also brought in, you know, Will Witherspoon and some people, Bob Baronis, right. and they have a following. So, right. you know, you could see it in that effect, too. But where, where we're going is using some of the, uh, the, the cross-promotional abilities for instance, natural.com, and uh, to promote the shows we have, plus the collective will also do that. But the main focus of the collective is to help to focus on the music aspect. And every now and again, there'll be a little, hey, will you promote this, you know, electric car race at the fairgrounds, sure. or the entrepreneurial mind show that Jeff did about whatever, whatever, yeah, right. whatever we decide, you know, is a good fit. Right. Very cool. So, uh, fast forward me five or ten years. What, what do you think this is all going to look like? Five or ten years from now, mm -hmm. they, as we know, there won't be any newspapers, right? There will be TV, but look, it goes. Everything is about getting people's attention. Everything nowadays is about getting in their face. And how do you do that without spending every bit of money you can possibly think of? And well, because well, that doesn't even work anymore, especially with the millennials. They don't trust that kind of loud. Yeah. In your face message. Yeah, I mean, when you put billboards, they ignore that. That's you know? right. Even ads on television, they ignore. Exactly. They actually look at ways to get around it. It has to be, in, I believe, in a conversation of some sort. With how people that, they trust. Yes, and how you do that is not, there's no one key answer to that. But how do they pick a television show now? I mean, I actually wonder this myself. I don't watch network TV any longer. I will maybe see a show if it's on Netflix or downloaded from Amazon. But who am I listening to? You know, I'm listening to... I don't know, but I think that, you know, it goes back to when I was at HBO, we, um, we were empowered by a panel. We were given the, a little panel of people given the um, uh, job to, to decide when will Americans get, will North Americans get um, movies on demand and what should HBO do to prepare for it. And we had no idea. Right. But we did come back with the right uh, recommendation, which is to brand yourself. Right. And become a trusted brand, in essence. But, uh, and they've done that now. But how it goes further, now we have an a, a atmosphere where television and obviously music can exist independent of the distribution mechanism. And so you can go right to people if you find the right way to do so. And this is a way to reach them. This is, a, this is from five years. This is a new television network, right? 
Very cool. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Well, Enjoy talking you, with you about this today. All right. I appreciate it. All right. Take care. Thank you.